A very good afternoon to all, and I welcome you to the session. And this is about uh, the most prominent uh, feature of PIT Bhopal that we are talking about. That is collaborative active learning through technology. That is Caltech. So uh, always we, uh, the BIT Bhopal is projecting that we are having some um, different, some salient features which makes BIT Bhopal different from any other university. So Caltech is um, the learning pedagogy which BIT Bhopal is following and no any other university is following the same uh, learning pedag uh, pedagogy. So this Caltech actually stands for collaborative active learning through technology. And as you know that because the word collaborative is associated with this, so the, to make the learning active in um, order to make the learning more interesting, along with the passive learning, the active learning is collaborated into it. So uh, when we go for this collaborative and active learning through technology before uh, starting with the features, the characteristics and about uh, Caltech, I would like to show one of the video. Uh, kindly watch it. It will be more clear for you uh, to know about this, that what is actually collaborative active learning.
So, welcome to VIT Bhopal. And as I said, that it is uh, associated, uh, we are following the learning pedagogy, which is called as Caltech. So, uh, what actually Caltech is? So, uh, in the video, you must have gone through that, what actually it is following. So, the very best feature of Caltech is that we are having a special arrangement of the classrooms, which are not normal classrooms. They are called as studio um, classrooms. And they don't have any blackboard or uh, they don't have only the board or something like that. It is having the even the seating arrangement is different. There is no back benches and the student is allowed to sit in peer groups in this manner. So uh, when we are saying there is a collaboration of active learning and passive learning together, then that learning is much more effective as compared to the uh, learning which we go through in the normal classroom and hence uh, the Confucius word is very much applicable to the Celtic pedagogy that is I hear and I forget I see and I remember I do and I understand and this is the motive of implicating Celtic in VIT Bhopal is that we are involving the students in the particular topic. Whenever we are starting with a topic, you must be knowing that in here in VIT Bhopal, the lectures are not of normal uh, 45 minutes. The lectures are of one and a half uh, hours. So uh, this one and a half hours, you need to divide it accordingly because you are going to become an engineer your practical uh, <clears throat> applicability should be very uh, good as compared to the uh, normal, um, you know, professions. And for this, we need to involve each and everyone for the practical approach of a particular topic. So we divide that one and a half hours in this manner, like first 30 minutes for a particular topic, that is the lecture. The next 30 minutes, you need to involve into it. You have to find the practical applications in your daily life. And then the demonstration. The next uh, 30 minutes is for the demonstration for different activities associated with it. So in other words, we can say that when, while accepting Caltech, while uh, providing with the Caltech pedagogy, we will transform from this thing to the uh, this thing that means the active participation of the students in every lecture in every topic to create interest because whenever we are saying that it is very much obvious that only hearing the lecture uh, taking the notes it is the general traditional way of teaching so just to make divert of it to make involvement of the students, to make involvement of everyone who is there in the class, we need to um, add students, we need to create the uh, interest in that particular topic. So the, that those activities which we are applying here, they may be of different types, like for a demonstration, like uh, they can be group discussion, like uh, they can be any sort of presentation it can be any type but there may be it must the topic must include different type of activities fine like uh, as i mentioned the classroom arrangement is of different type and hence we are applying allowing the students to sit with their peer group so that there can be uh, rigorous discussion on a particular topic because we all know that whenever we allow them to discuss with their peer group it's very easy for a student to understand a particular topic 
for example, uh, because sometimes the students are hesitating to ask the question. Sometimes the students is not uh, is thinking of that if I ask the question quite uh, quite possible in a class, um, my peer group, my friends, my teacher will think that I have no idea. I don't know. I'm ignorant. So that hesitation is there. But when he's asking the same question to the, his peer group, it's easy for him to understand things. So what actually is active learning? The different teaching methods and the different strategies, what we are using to involve student participation more and more, their engagement more and more with the material in a meaningful way during the class time, right? So we are applying this active learning along with the passive learning. It's not like that the lecture is not important or the theoretical part is not important. But when we are talking about this thing, we need to have uh, this thing. Fine. Uh, just a minute. Give me a uh, few time, please. Just a minute. I'll be back. Fine. Okay, so I'm back with the, the presentation and uh, we'll be doing it like uh, what actually active learning is. So as I mentioned that along with the theoretical teaching methods, we have to uh, in include, we have to inculcate different strategies, uh, different activities so that the student participation and engagement is more and more with the material in a meaningful way during class time. Fine. So what is actually Caltech is? Caltech is a two pronged approach. One is active learning, another is collaborative learning. Active learning stands for the anything course related material that the students do other than simply watching, listening and taking notes, which we are generally doing in the traditional classes. Collaborative learning, that means apart from lecture, the learning is added with different sort of activities and strategies. And as I mentioned, the activities can of different types. They can be group discussions, uh, they can be uh, presentations, they can be demonstration, because if we are talking about the science subjects, we can have different demonstrations and different um, uh, activity uh, related things. Uh, for example, in physics, we are having different sort of activity just to understand a simple um, topic or simple uh, lecture. Uh, apart from the theoretical things, we are inculcating the different type of activities just to make it more uh, approachable. So what is the difference between the passive versus active learning? So we, whenever we are talking about the passive learning, it is only uh, the learning activities. And when we are talking about the active learning, it includes explanation, it includes demonstration, that is application and practice. It includes analyze of some, that particular topic, definition, creation, evaluation. That means it doesn't mean that we need to ignore the passive uh, learning totally. The collaborative active learning means that we have to actually merge both the types of learning, the active learning as well as passive learning together, just to make that particular topic more understanding. As uh, already we have seen that if I do, I'll be able to remember the things more accurately. And hence, the engagement of the students is very much required. Now, what is actually Caltech? It? How we are apply this Caltech pedagogy to our VIG Bhopal. So we, it is having different types of characteristics. 
so this is the technology that allows students to easily present work for review by peers and instructors as i mentioned we are having different type of seating arrangement inside the classroom the classrooms are studio classrooms and those classroom doesn't have any um, back benches the facilitator the teacher is the facilitator the instructor and is able to watch on each and every of the student the student that means he is approachable to each of the student if any student is having any problem they can directly approach to the instructor it doesn't mean the uh, students who are sitting at the back there is no such type of back bench the there is a uh, seating arrangement in which the facilitator the instructor is easily able to walk through each of the table and can ask if there is any difficulty and as the students are sitting with their group their peers so it is easily to uh, understand a particular topic for uh, any discussion for any understanding fine and uh, the seating arrangement as i already discussed hence the furniture is designed uh, to facilitate small group activities so small group activities can be done there the classroom structure uh, the studio classroom enables the instructors to interactively coach students during activities so that becomes very interactive session it is not a one way learning like uh, the uh, teacher is uh, entering the classroom delivering his lecture and go out this uh, type of things that means initially he has to suppose there is a topic the first 30 minutes he is going to actually introduce that topic then the next 30 minutes he is explaining the application of the topics where we can find it in our daily life the last 30 minutes he can have the demonstration the activity related with the topic so at last after one and half hours lecture when he is going out of the classroom the person the student is knowing each and everything about that particular topic now uh, unique options for seamless interaction between the students and the faculty and this is very much required this is the requirement of the time to have the interactive sessions the classroom doesn't mean the one way learning the one way talking the classrooms the lecture rooms the you know, lectures that needs to be interactive it should be interactive between the students and the teachers uh i'm having some of the pictures i want to show you from uh, vrg mobile that how we are having uh, dealing with the classrooms uh, what sort of classrooms we are having uh, this is the studio classroom uh, and as i mentioned there will be no blackboard or no back benches uh, for the students this is one of the uh, studio classroom english class uh, studio we are having and uh, what are the main characteristics of studio classes that why what is the main uh, function of studio classes why we are going uh, not using normal classrooms rather than we are using studio classrooms is that uh, as i said it's easy for a student to learn in groups in their peer they enjoy the um, you know you all know that few people enjoy the association the um, association with your peer group and hence it is uh, more easy to work in groups uh, in order to learn something new and whenever we are applying many activities it generally emphasize collaborative and cooperative learning the instructors get students going on projects and are on hand as resources the instructors are acting as facilitators not merely the teachers or the lecture delivery responsibility for learning is placed on the students he is the as i mentioned the teacher is only the facilitator he is giving you a particular Uh, topic now the student is responsible for learning uh, anything which is related with that topic and hence the learning ability obviously increases class activities built on each other it provides a dynamic and integrated learning environment that improves the personal intellectual development as well as content learning because if you are presenting something if you are standing in front of the class and delivering on a topic obviously it will help you to develop your personality as well this is the computer studio of iit bhopal 
and uh, because all the time whenever i'm talking about calcate the main thing is the activity that we are actually indulged in involved in different type of activities obviously the activities will be um, will depend on the uh, curriculum the syllabus the and may vary from the content to content like we are having different type of subjects we are having different type of uh, papers and based on that content the activities can be designed so what sort of activities we can involve when we are going through the caltech they can be cooperative and collaborative activities different type of discussions can be involved debates are there presentations are there simple paper and pencil exercises are there because uh, uh, the cac the computer part is very an integrated part of every branch here so computer projects work with samples or any of a number of other things can be involved as i mentioned that totally depends upon the students the teacher as well as the content of the particular question paper projects may be multifaceted and can take more than one class sessions it doesn't mean that if a particular topic is there we are completing it in one session and we are saying that this particular topic is off we can have that particular topic the activities that can be laid on and can be multifaceted they can be a, uh, in order to provide the information by way of short lectures as i said the first 30 minutes is reserved for the lecture and the other part of the uh, your uh, lecture time can be devoted to some other activity they can be demonstration they can be discussions debates presentation can be pro computer projects anything that depends upon the content of that particular syllabus so uh, full length lectures are generally avoided this is the electrical studio of vrt bhopal so why caltech the question arises that why why we need to go for the caltech or uh, why actually we have adopted the caltech because it enhances problem solving skills as i said the learning responsibility is on the student that means it will obviously increase integrate the problem solving skills among the students it's not like that this is the problem go and solve it in the exam and you will pass the exam no the student has to solve uh, think about the problem hence it is inspiring the critical thinking also because if i say if i give you a topic and then i'll say just find it out that where it is applicable to your daily life for example because i my background is physics i'm teaching engineering physics so i can give an example that you are sitting in the uh, chair right now so now tell me that uh, what Uh, which uh, newton's law is applicable to this uh, posture and how it is applicable so this is what you need to apply everything uh, related with your daily life activity that where how and where it is applicable good it improves social interactions and supports diversity because you are sitting with your uh, peer group you are working in team your presentation can be a group activity a group activity is there so obviously social interaction that is an integrated part of your life now the student life the working life the professional life so the social interaction is very important and in order to improve that because you are working in team in uh, among your peer group you are interacting with your uh, faculties so it is improving social interactions and supports diversity it aids the development of self management skills because the problem you yourself is uh, dealing with hence you know about the self management skills you have to solve your problem you have to think about a particular topic you have to think about a particular numericals so everything that will uh, leads to develop the self management skills as i said there can be different activities which involves discussions as well as debate and other things so that will develop your oral communication skills because it is very much important whenever you are going for an interview or anything uh, during the placement time during the training time so that was 
an important part of your uh, student life. Uh, so oral communication skills it needs to be developed. Along with all these things, it fosters the development of interpersonal relationships. You are working among peer group, you are working in teams. So the interpersonal relationships, how you have to perform among your team, how you have to work with the team, with the other people who are different from uh, you. Uh, that is what you are doing and hence it is um, enhancing the uh, interpersonal relationships. Now, this is the learning pyramid when we are going for the collaborative active learning through technology. The lecture contributes 5%, reading that contributes 10%, audio visual uh, effects of a particular topic that contributes 20%, demonstration of a particular topic that contributes 30 percent discussion among your group that contributes 50 percent practice by doing is 75 percent and teaching others immediate use that means application of that particular topic that contributes into 90 percent and this is the average retention rate whenever we go through it that means the lecture if you are only um, listening to the lectures obviously it is uh, helpful for, uh, to you only 5% of it is helpful for you. But when we integrate all these things together, then your learning ability increase up to 90%. Now, I'll show you some of the pictures, what we are doing, what sort of activities we are doing inside the uh, studio rooms. So this is one of the picture in which we are actually, you must have heard of um, electromagnetic train. So this is what we are doing by uh, having some simple things. So the demonstration of electromagnetism, then uh, the presentation, group activity presentation that we are doing inside the rooms. Then brainstorming sessions among the peer group. As I said, they are sitting with your peers and can have different types of discussions among them related with the topics, obviously, whatever uh, we are teaching inside the classroom. Collaborative active teamwork. And these are the real pictures we are going through uh, during the uh, class activities only. This is uh, because as I mentioned that my background is physics, I'm teaching engineering physics. So this is a simple um, demonstration of uh, total internal reflection, right? So it is nothing but that how the light, because already we are seeing that the light can travel um, in a straight line only. So how an optical fiber works, the basic principle of an optical fiber is the total internal reflection. So this is the simplest uh, demonstration of total internal reflection. The uh, water which is coming out of uh, this nozzle, you can see that uh, whenever the laser light is passed through it, at every point it undergoes total internal reflection and it is bending with the uh, water uh, force, right? So the water is acting and water which is coming out of the bottle, it is acting as an optical fiber and the light is traveling from one end to the other and just like an optical fiber is behaving and you must have gone through the optical fiber so this is depicting the total internal reflection and nothing uh, just we have taken one bottle which is filled with the water a small hole into it the water which is coming out from the hole it goes like uh, this uh, motion and when the laser light is allowed to pass through it it moves from one point to the other point. This is the basic, actually, um, principle of optical fiber, the total internal reflection. So whenever we are teaching this thing, so when we are demonstrating this thing in this manner, it is very much easy for the student to understand the things. Uh, this is actually the different parts and the students are uh, calculating the velocity and the time taken by a particle to cover different distances inclined at different angles so newton's law the frictions everything we are going to we are depicting uh, demonstrating into it and calculating for different parts that what is the time taken by this so hence what is the effect of friction what is the effect of 
angular um, inclination when a particle is traveling from one point to other point. Uh, we are having different type of videos uh, which are depicting that how actually Caltech is working. I would like to show you. So the very first video I would like to see, show you that actually uh, this is a depiction of a second order differential equation. Simple harmonic motion is done because whenever we are seeing that why we are starting maths. What is the use of maths in engineering? So this is what we are doing. That whenever a particle is doing simple harmonic motion at particular time, what is the position of the particle? This is what is the application of second order differential equation. So everything, whatever we study in maths and physics, everything is having a application in daily life. This is what we are doing. So by doing, uh, getting the second order differential equation, we can find exactly that what is the position of that particular wave. Okay. So I'll come to the next video. So this is the simplest, you know, the demonstration of Li-Fi, that how Li-Fi works. With the help of solar cells. So the boys will resume. That means the communication is through the light. This is what we are doing. And if the distance is closer, the voice will increase. The audio is increased. So I'm showing some of the activities which we have already done here in the uh, classrooms. This is what we have shown. This is the particular pebbles. We are dropping it down and we are calculating that what is the effect of their path, how it is rebouncing, what is the path it is following. This is the demonstration of uh, total internal reflection. This is uh, the quality of the water to be checked. Uh, this is in chemistry lab they are doing. And different filter they have prepared in the chemistry lab only. So as I mentioned, we are having uh, different type of activities we can have, uh, whether it can be discussions, demonstrations. So some of the uh, video what I have shown, they are of the demonstrations. 
So uh, there is a comparison, comparative study between the traditional and active learning. Um, and this is uh, what I mean to uh, actually communicate that why we have opted for Caltech. So for traditional teaching, teachers are always the information providers. Nowadays, you are having a lot of uh, sources which are acting as information providers. We are having Google, we are having chat, GPT, etc. But in active learning, teachers are acting as facilitators, not merely the information providers only. They can, in traditional teaching, they are talking, students are listening and taking notes. As a result, students are mostly passive. They are not uh, interacting with the students, with their teachers. They are not actively participating in the particular topic which they are going to cover. In active uh, learning, teachers are posing questions. They are uh, giving problems to the students. Students has to answer. Students has to actually uh, take uh, participate in uh, the topic. They have to work out the answers. They have to solve the solution uh, problems. They have to uh, come up with the solutions. And hence, they have to be mostly active. In traditional teaching, content is the king units are structured around important content. Whereas in uh, active uh, learning, outcomes are the key. Units are structured around the activities that promote the outcomes, not only the lectures, because as I said, you, for lectures, for the, for the theoretical parts, you are having different type of resources. You are having Google, you are having ChatGPT, you are having books, everything you are getting it. So what is the use of teaching? How the learning? So there is a difference between the teaching and the learning. So how to convert that teaching into learning for this active learning is required. So uh, for traditional teaching, typically a uh, uh, linear progression is there. Whereas in active learning, typically an iterative progression is there. And uh, the traditional learning does give a, a scattered way, uh, way of teaching. Whereas in active learning, assessments are real life like and test multiple areas simultaneously. As I said, it needs to be applied. It needs to associate with your daily life examples. This is one more example of three dimensional, what we are talking about uh, the holography, right? So this is nothing but in the hands, the student is having in uh, a paper folded in a particular shape. And when it is um, uh, taking near to that particular uh, shadow, it is uh, giving the way how a three dimensional figure is looking like. The refraction, the electromagnetic demonstration, the laser, the debates which is going on. This is what in different environments when a uh, um, metal is kept, what is the effect after some day? Analysis. and the filter in order to uh, test the quality of water. So this is all about Caltech and I hope we are soon uh, meeting here in the campus along with this learning pedagogy and you will be getting benefited with this pedagogy again. So this is all about the Caltech. This just I uh, tried to um, give you an idea about that what is uh, Caltech is because this is the, uh, you know, uh, special feature of uh, BIT Bhopal. So soon we'll be meeting here and you'll be undergoing with the experience of Caltech that what actually Caltech is. Thank you so much. And for the next uh, session that is from three to four UHV, you need to uh, join with the uh, link which is shared with you. Thank you so much. If you're having any question, you can uh, just uh, mail me in the same mail ID from where you are getting the uh, link details. Thank you so much.